This is McTile. Over a year ago now, I had one tile to stand on, and every 1000 XP I gain unlocks a new tile. I can't use banks or trade other players, and I'm unlocking RuneScape one tile at a time. The goal? RuneScape's biggest challenge, the Inferno. We are in the final stretch, preparing for RuneScape's hardest challenge, and with the Rune Pouch upgrade done, I have my eyes on what could just be the final upgrade of the series. I have been putting in the graveyard shift over at Pest Control. I spent a couple hours last night getting 200 points to spend on range XP, get myself closer and closer to this final level for the Inferno. 750k away from maxing out range. It's been a long time coming. There's still so much on the to-do list before the Inferno. 99 range, 95 magic, 94 hit points. These are the three must-have stats I need before I attempt anything, and they're easily going to take up the next 50 plus hours of game time. I have some fun plans for how to use these goals to potentially get some last second Inferno upgrades, and whenever I have some free time, I'll be casting some fire strikes like I did at the start of this week for a couple hours just to inch away at that 95 magic goal. It is time to get one of, if not the, final upgrade of the series. So many things it could be. Honestly, maybe I don't even know what it is, but first. Whoa, whoa, you're looking like you need some fuel, some nice clean energy for your body. Maybe that doesn't make you crash or jitter like some of the crappy energy Energy drinks out on the market. You came to the right place. I'm your local G Fuel dealer, sponsored by G Fuel, the sponsor of today's video, G Fuel. G Fuel is a performance-based zero sugar energy drink to fuel your grind, but don't just take my word for it. This is what happened when I drank G Fuel last week. Gamer fuel, baby. <laughs> G Fuel comes in so many different flavors, maybe even a billion, I don't know. We have flavors like Bahama Mama, Watermelon Limeade, and one of my favorites, Blue Ice. I've definitely drank that one the most. As you can see, I'm somewhat of a collector. How can you not be? It, it tastes so good and your timing couldn't be better with all these spookified flavors coming out October 9th, not to mention all the other stuff G Fuel is about to do. It's your lucky day because I have an astounding 30% discount for you for a limited time only. You could be sipping on some Blue Ice and go straight to clicking on some pixelated rocks right after. Use code SETTLED, click the link in the description, or go grab some from Walmart or Target. You will not regret it. Give it a shot. The plan for today, and maybe even the rest of this week, is to fill my currently empty ring slot. It just feels like a crime to go into the Inferno without any ring at all. And to fill that ring slot, we're paying a visit to the good old Dagonoth Kings. This is my best option for a good ring, and at 1 in 128, the rates aren't bad. The Archer's Ring is good, don't get me wrong, but I have my eyes set on the Seer's Ring, which might seem a little weird. But I'm happy with my ranged accuracy at this point. Something I think I'll struggle with, on the other hand, in the Inferno is magic accuracy. At the start of every Inferno wave, I'll be sending out an Ice Barrage, and hitting it successfully makes a wave significantly easier. And currently, my accuracy is roughly 78%, which, across 60 plus waves, isn't great. This Seer's Ring can solve that problem. When imbued, a Seer's Ring gives 12 magic accuracy, almost as much as wearing another pair of mystic bottoms. It's that good. So we're off to the Dagonoth King Lair. It's probably going to take over half my tiles to get down there. And honestly, my setup really isn't great right now. I'm just winging this. Probably going to have to come back with some blood spells because I have like no food on me right now. I just kind of wanted to do a run instantly. I'm like halfway through the dungeon right now and I've taken so much damage. I'm on 48 health. I have two food on me. Oh my god, we made it, but at what cost? I used all of my food getting down here. I would have died had I had no food. I don't know why I underestimated this so badly. Oh, we are so back. Supreme is busy with someone. Can I tag Prime from here? I can. What the heck? That's actually such a long range. All the Dagonoth Kings are weak to a certain style, and luckily, Prime is weak to range, so it's the only one I plan to kill. It works out perfectly for me. All right, we're done. One Prime kill, one Sears ring. Here we go. 865 coins. Pretty close. Not sure how long I'm going to last here with three food, but skills are insanely fast. Five sharks? Okay. <laughs> Maybe the best drop I could have gotten apart from a Sears ring itself. Now I can stay here longer. The respawn times are so long. I need food to like last until the boss respawns. This should be kill number 10. But as soon as I see anything, I am out of here because this is getting a little... Yep, that's a big number. We're out, we're out, we're out. <laughs> okay, get out. Almost got kill number 10 though. And now I know I can bring way more anti-poisons and more blood spells. Don't really need that much prayer. As always, got to break the looting bag and get everything out of it. I think I've said it before, but switching to Ancients is the biggest mobility nerf in the game for me. I've unlocked almost every location in the game through a teleport or a shortcut. So not having those teleports or shortcuts basically blocks me off from most of the areas that I've been in the game once I switch to Ancients. So it's a really bad nerf for me. And that's why I don't like being on Ancients. 
entrance, but for the Sears ring, I will do it. Ancient spellbook on. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's me, your Dagonoth Prime champion. Okay, blood spells were worth it, I admit. <gasps> no way. <laughs> No way. 16 kills, baby. Let's go. I was ready to grind this thing out for like 12 hours today. That is beautiful. I think this is overall the luckiest RuneScape account I've ever made. Just such consistent luck. I can't believe how fast that happened. 16 kills, bro. Let's go. We're not done yet, though. We're gonna have to imbue this ring. Imbuing a ring doubles its stats, so we kind of have to do it. The plan is to sit at Nightmare Zone, re-killing quest bosses for, uh six hours to get enough points to envy the ring before heading to nightmare zone i decided to do the fishing contest quest and a little bit of the recipe for disaster quest so i can get myself a rock cake okay there we go got a rock cake took a little bit of time but now nightmare zone is gonna be a lot easier I can use this to get myself to one hp and then i'll sip a bunch of absorption potions in nightmare zone and then monsters can only hit me for one it costs four thousand points to get an absorption potion in this mini game and six hundred and fifty thousand points to imbue this ring so i'm gonna have to spend a lot of points to make more points that's just how it goes, I guess. I'm about to get six hour logged, which means, well, I've been at this for about six hours and I still need about 250,000 points. So uh, I guess tack on another three hours to the estimate. It's been a long day. This actually took a lot longer than I remember at Nightmare Zone, but the upgrade is worth every hour spent Sears Ring. I, I was expecting to spend a few days hunting the ring and imbuing it together, but I managed all of this in one day. It is pretty late, but it is still the same day. So 200k away from 99 range. Got so many things done today. That was such a good grind for me overall. And since we're done with this rock cake, I can finish up this recipe for disaster quest. Get some, uh, get some XP, get some chest access. I don't know if it's really going to help me in any way, but next thing on the list i'm gonna be killing chickens here until i get fifty thousand feathers this is a grind i haven't really been looking forward to all that <laughs> 99 range baby it's been a long long time coming first skill cape first 99 on the account and of course one of the three inferno stats i needed i basically just spent a bunch of time doing pest control since the combat achievements have made getting points really fast and it requires very little attention the long long awaited skill cape first one on the account and it's green just like my tiles the perk of this cape is it acts exactly like an accumulator so it saves my ammo but i'm gonna be honest it's not that good until i get another 99 that'll trim the cape and give it some pretty good stats so i might have to wait for that before it's worth using Using, but that's another inferno requirement off the list two to go okay real talk two major things left to take care of and they're way more important than 99 range as cool as that was this will be a long week for me 95 magic is not only the grindiest thing remaining but also the most expensive i do have a ton of money from gauntlet but I'll need plenty of money for the Inferno itself, so I need to be a little careful with my spending. And I have a plan to potentially get another really cool upgrade, if we get lucky enough. I have 27 prayer pots left. Uh, I'm gonna make them last as long as possible, but I'm using every last one on magic XP. I'm just gonna burst dust devils until I'm flat broke. Bought almost 600 bronze knives, should be enough for dust devils. Amazing news, guys. 91 magic, four levels to go. No! Oh, I wasn't paying any attention. No. Oh, getting back there is super annoying, especially on the ancient spell book. There goes 40 minutes of my time today. My 27 prayer potions got used up real fast. And before I knew it, I had to resort to other methods of hitting this 95 magic goal. I did a lot of different things from teleporting to fire blasting to alking and even killing hellhounds for hard clue scrolls because I did want to try my hand at getting another inferno upgrade and will definitely revisit this soon. There's 92 magic, beautiful three to go. By the time I hit 93 magic with over 25 plus hours invested in this grind in particular, I was down hard from the 26 mil I started the week with. Everyone doubted me and here I am with 93 magic. I'm not going to provide any sources as to who doubted me, but uh, we do still have two levels to go and the funds are kind of running a bit low. 17 mil is still a lot of cash, but at this point, uh, it is what it is. 94 magic, long time coming, and in theory, this could be good enough for the inferno, but one little monster specifically, this silly little bat has a chance to drain my stats and if i'm drained below 94 magic i can't freeze things and that's a risk that could jeopardize a run and i can't be having that so we're reaching for one more magic level and i know exactly how i want to do it because i finally have a ton of tiles 
prepared for a big clue scroll session. This is what I was waiting for. 3,500 tiles to work with. Hard clue completion rate is not good, but with this many tiles, I can probably bump it up by a couple percent and hopefully get some completions, hopefully get a last minute Inferno gear upgrade. At this point, there's not a ton of slots that I could realistically upgrade, except for three of them. Boots, gloves, and ammo. All three of these could be upgraded from a hard clue scroll, and each of them has six potential upgrade options. All of these potential upgrades increase my prayer bonus, which in my opinion is the greatest currency in the Inferno. I only have 10 prayer bonus with my current setup, which could definitely be improved. And that's exactly what we're going to try to do on this hard clue scroll hunt. And in the meantime, we have 700k magic XP left to finish off 95 magic. So why not? I'm well aware there are many better things I could be doing for clue scrolls right now, but I just want to do this. So let's go. It's been a while. Hard clue. What's the first step? Shiloh Village CKR. Very doable. Let's do it. Okay. So the second step is wilderness. It's not that far from the canoe I unlocked. And since my whole thing right now is completing hard clues. I am down to risk this one. By risk it, I mean I'm just gonna die in Edgeville and all my stuff is gonna stay here. I've avoided doing this in the past because I don't want to do it for every single wilderness step, but since our entire goal right now is to complete hard clues, I can't really avoid them. It's like a one in five shot that you get a wilderness step on a hard clue, so I, I just, I kind of have to suck it up and start unlocking them, start doing them. Maple Shorpo coming in clutch, the weapon of champions. Uh, let's see if this, is, oh, a looting bag. That's actually pretty nice. I won't have to get another one later. Another step and and another wilderness clue. This is what I'm talking about. They're just so common that I'm kind of forced to do them. So I'll be storing my stuff at Edgeville and just going into these wilderness clues. I mean, it's like 30 minutes every time I have to do that, but it makes me wonder what it's like to play with a bank these days. I forget sometimes that 99.99% .99 of players can just bank their things and then go into the wilderness and do a clue. It's just not a big deal. I, just, I forget about that stuff. Never in a million years did I think I'd be completing this agility course on this account. Another brave wizard taken from this world. Step number four. Another doable one. This could be the final one too. Uh, I can go pick up my stuff because this is not a dangerous one. That should be good for now. I grabbed most of my stuff. I'll come back for the rest of it after we finish this step. And another step, step number five. Mm, okay, so for this one, we need two different quests. We need Merlin's Crystal and Holy Grail. Uh, I'm gonna go take care of those then. That's gonna take like an hour to do these two quests, but afterward we should most likely get a casket. So very challenging quest. Merlin's Crystal done. Now we just need to do Holy Holy Grail, and we're good to go. We're not even done with the quest here yet, and we get another step. Okay, thank God I can do it. I was about to be really, really upset if I couldn't do this step. Getting blocked on step six would have been so miserable, but uh, we are guaranteed a casket here. And not only that, but Holy Grail completed. Got a lot of XP from that quest. Genuinely very good reward for that. Yes, there it is, baby. Six step hard clue. We went through a lot to do that, and I am so excited to see the reward. It's been a while since I've done a hard clue. So many upgrades we could get from this. Mmm, uh, it's, uh, um, I mean, I'll, it's some money. I can't really save this one. It's, it's just a bad clue. I gotta do the bar crawl for this step, which means I gotta go visit like 11 bars in RuneScape. That's gonna be pretty expensive tile-wise, but that's what they're for, right? And I have to drop this. I can't, uh, I can't do this clue no matter what, unfortunately. Can't do anything to grind it out. It's just a, it's just a lock. It's time to level up in the world of hard clues. I'm getting back on the ancient spell book. We're about to burst some jellies because they have an insane hard clue rate. And if I can kill like what, seven, eight, nine at a time, we're gonna be getting them so much faster. I don't have any prayer potions, but I'm just gonna be prayer flicking the entire time, at least as much as I can. And this should be way faster for getting clues. Boom, oh my God, that was so fast. Five minutes, five minutes for a hard clue. And step number five. Yes, another hard clue completed. Let's go, I'm so excited. It's just, I don't get to complete them very often. And we get, uh, black DI body rune skirt. I mean, just a bunch of alchemicals again. I mean, it is what it is. That's kind of how hard clues go. Hoping for a better tomorrow with, uh, with actual uniques. 18 that I can get that can help me. I, I have faith. I have faith that I'm going to get one of them. This will be the longest hard clue step I've ever unlocked. Uh, clocking in at just over five. 500 tiles just to get to one little place. Okay, and we have another completed hard clue. Beautiful. Let's see what we get from this. Oh, it looked so promising. Look at how many unique, four uniques in that clue. I know it's a long shot for an upgrade, but 
I, that that does look good. Four uniques and a clue. Can't complain about that. That's pretty sick. Things you love to see. Another hard clue on the ground. No things you hate to see. An impossible step. Oh, I've been waiting for this. It's been three weeks since I got my first stamina potion. That's my second stamina potion for the Inferno now. Beautiful. Doing a little detour, I decided to get the items for this medium clue step, and I'm going to build the stash unit here so that I can complete it in the future. Medium clues also have about eight potential upgrades for the Inferno, so they are still worth doing, but I'm going to stick to hards for the most part. I think tomorrow I'm going to stack a couple easy, medium, and hard caskets just so we can have a big opening with all of them. I think that would be really fun. And we get the medium casket. Nice. This clue actually took over an hour because I had to get a lot of different items for it. Let's see what we get. Uh, Armadillo page four. We did get a unique just now we were looking for. Fair game. So I've once again run into a bit of a roadblock. I need to finish fairy tale part two for this next step. And that's exactly what I'm going to go do. Might as well just unlock it permanently. So I'll see you in an hour. Luckily, I did have most of this quest area already unlocked. So we do get some Herblore XP and a little lamp that I'm just going to also use on Herblore, I think. No, I can't do the next step. I started the next morning by getting a couple medium clues, an easy clue, and a hard clue, and trying to complete all of them for one big opening session. I was able to complete two medium clues this morning, and this should be the final step of this easy clue. The only thing we can get from easies are blessings. That's our easy clue completed, and we have one step remaining on this hard clue, so we're gonna have four caskets to open. I'm pretty excited. It turned out to be a really good idea to get that fairy tale part two done, because it's my last step on this hard clue. With medium clues on the table now, we can hope for either ranger boots or holy sandals as a big buff to the inferno setup. Rolling a useful boot pair is extremely unlikely, though, to say the least. Got the hard casket, which means we have four caskets to open. Well, honestly, not bad odds. Not, not terrible odds of getting something here. Start with the easy clue. Not very high hopes for this one, but honestly, that's a lot of money for an easy clue. That's probably three times the average you can expect from an easy. Moving on to the mediums. <gasps> no way. N no way i'm in disbelief five five clues five mediums for that that's like the best pair of boots i could have gotten for the inferno what is that luck on clue number five what is going on and i still have two more caskets to open okay uh let's let's open another one uh, we get a Ceridoman page, some runes, not really that interesting. It's really hard to top that, to be fair. Really, really hard to top that clue. And we have our hard casket to finish it up. The pirate hat, okay, what a clue session. I actually wanna keep this hat so bad. I, I think I will, it's just, it's just lovely. I mean, look at me. I was gonna grind way more clues, but this is as good as it gets. Um, I can't beat holy sandals. These are such a good pull. Unlike ranger boots or god dehyde boots, they don't give any negative magic attack bonus. So in my opinion, these are the best boots I could have gotten. Well, I guess we can go ahead and alk all the stuff we don't need. Whoa, how did that happen? All right, enough of that. 95 magic inferno stat number two completed one final level on the agenda before we are good to go and that's 94 hit points and you know what i think i know just the way to grind this level out It's been nine months since I first killed Zalra on this account, and it was pretty difficult back then with the gear we were working with. Nowadays, things are a little different. I am really geared out to grind this boss. Zalra holds one amazing Inferno upgrade, and that's the blowpipe. I talked about it nine months ago, and it remains as relevant today as it did before. It's not a necessity, but it has so many cases in the Inferno that are so useful. The special attack can heal you, it's double the speed of the Bofa, so it's great for low HP and low defense targets. Ultimately, it would just be really good to have. Even though it's been nine months since I've done Zora on this account, the main inconveniences of the boss have stayed the same throughout all this time. I'm still gonna have to make my own rings of recoil. I'm still gonna have to go buy anti-poisons every trip, so that stuff definitely still limits my kills per hour like a huge amount. This time around, the luxury I have is my gear is good enough that I think I can get kills with much less food, so I'm gonna be making five or six rings of recoil, and I'll just keep them in my inventory so that I don't have to make them as often as I did last time. I'm hoping this gear is good enough to just consistently get kills with a lower amount of food. I don't even have any switches or anything. I'm just going in with this range setup and I'll be ranging every single phase, even the ones that aren't weak to range. As anticipated, the bow is just ripping nonstop. It really doesn't matter that I have no switches. It doesn't matter that I'm attacking with the same style on every phase. It's already so much fun in this gear. I could definitely see myself staying here a while because it's just so free. Like it's just so insanely free with this 
this setup. It's our first kill back and we get, uh, honestly a pretty good drop. I will take that. I like the battle staffs. Three minute kill, actually a bit long, I think. We'll, we'll probably be averaging like two and a half minute kills or so. Boom, just like that, absolutely shattered the PB. Two minutes, 11 and an insane drop. 70 manta rays is so good for me. What is that drop? I just got a loop and tooth half in one drop. And from the first crystal key on the account, we get uh, nothing great. Uh, pretty standard. <gasps> oh my God. No way. 44 kills. That's insane. Actually, the second best drop I could have gotten. Obviously, the blowpipe would have been amazing. To get this so early is so important. I never need anti-poison to kill Zolra ever again. I have permanent immunity to poison and venom. This is a godsend drop for this grind. So good. Genuinely such an amazing drop to get. I'm losing a little bit of DPS since I'm not wearing the crystal helm, but to not be worried about getting poisoned, I think is so much bigger than that. See, I can put the crystal helm on during phases where I absolutely can't be poisoned. I'm getting like eight to nine kills per hour right now, but with no more stops for anti-poisons, we could be getting an extra kill per hour now. That's a PB. 145, what a nice PB. Ooh, you know, I've been thinking about this. I've been, uh, I was expecting to get one of these eventually. I can do this step actually. I'm gonna go try to do this but I've never completed an elite clue on this account. The odds are insanely low. I just, with these restrictions and my stats, it's just not a high probability, but it would be really cool just to say I've done one on this account. So I will be attempting every single elite clue I get from Zora and maybe, just maybe, we can complete one. String a U longbow. That is maybe one of the worst ones I could have gotten. If I still had the money, I actually would spend it on fletching, but I'm down to six and a half mil. So we'll get more, we'll get more. Oh, I could get the combat task here, please. Yes, yes. oh my God. <laughs> I've been trying to get that combat task for so long. And we get another elite clue. Let's go, Let's see if we can do this one. Got another super deep wilderness step. These elite clues could rob me of every tile I have. There's so many steps that I don't have unlocked that would take six or 7,000 more tiles. Okay, please just be a casket. This is step six. No, please. Oh, it's a Sherlock step. This could be so bad. I want to say there's only about 30% of Sherlock steps that I can complete right now, which is not, the, the odds do not favor me here. This is step number seven. Please be humble. No, no, not that. I have literally one rune crafting. That is, it's step seven, bro. It's step seven. The worst skill for me. It's literally, I have zero XP, dude. How long is 44 rune crafting? I'd have to go to library. That's like, I don't know, 10, 11 hours. Uh, do I want to invest that amount of time into- All right, there's 44 rune crafting. What? I was always going to get it. This actually ended up being more like 15 hours, by the way. I didn't think it would take this long, but there are just some things in this world that you have to do. 15 hours of rune crafting later, nature rune made. Although that's the first rune I've actually rune crafted. I did everything through library. So by the way, this was my first time training rune crafting in over five years. This is why you do it for this view. This is why you do it right here. Essentially the only elite clue I'll complete on this account. Let's, uh, let's see what we get. Um, it's, it's about what I expected, honestly. It would have been cool to see a, a cool unique, but you know what? Honestly, no regrets. That's a bucket list item. We take it. I've been at Zora for two days now with one unique at 44 kill count. We're getting close to hitting the rate for another, and I've decided to set a hard cap at 250 Zora kills. If I don't get the blowpipe by then, I'll be stepping into the inferno without it and just trying my luck. Every time I die at Zora, it's about a 30 minute time waste. I have to uh, buy runes over here just so I can get back to the charter. I have to do two trips to get my stuff back, so it's just very costly time wise to die. You really don't want to die. Kill number 140 for a dragon halberd. We need the money, honestly. I don't know what happened, man. My money just evaporated. It's 100 and 50 KC and we get Zolra Master. That's right. That's actually a big combat achievement for me. Five points. I'm pretty sure I'm super close to the medium combat achievements now. Ooh, very close to the mediums, actually. 18 points away. Just for a little bit of a break, I'm gonna go kill Giant Mole for some combat tasks because I'm so close to the mediums and I can 
easily get a couple of points here. Decided to kill the easiest boss in the game for five more points. I just kind of want to finish off the mediums before the inferno. I, it's just so close at this point that I kind of want to do it. 156. We need the death runes. Good. Good drop. We're up to 7k death runes in the rune pouch. I'm collecting those as much as I can. Entering day four of Zolra, I was officially going dry for a second unique and approaching my hard cap of 250 kills. On the bright side, I'm up almost 3,000 death runes since starting this grind, and I'm getting very close to 94 hit points, which was one of the main points of this. Wow, what a drop. Eight teleports. That's so good for me. That speeds up my kills so much. I said I would go to 250, but if I don't get a unique by 250, then I think I'm just gonna go until I get another unique drop because I think it would be sad to end with only one. Battle stabs and teleports though. Nice, pretty good drop. Oh my God, that's a unique, but not what I was looking for. No. No, I can't even make any jewelry out of it, dude. My crafting level's too low. That's such a sad one to get. That's the saddest unique you can get. I was, uh, I was 200 kills on the dot from our Serp Helm. 200 kills for the Onyx. I guess I will be stopping at 250 then. Uh, I did get the second unique after all, so I'm gonna get these last six kills done. Maybe we get a miracle drop here. Okay, it all ends here. Took uh, the full four days to get 250 kills. I'm gonna say over 30 hours to get this kill count. The Serp is nice. I'm still happy. I'm going to keep the Serp Helm, but uh, this is what the looting bag is looking like right now. I got a bunch of Snapdragons from Zolra, which at least that's a really nice thing. That's going to be more super restores for the Inferno, which is great. And I also got a bunch of death runes. I think I ended up getting around 7k death runes from this grind. So tons of great things, a lot of great benefits. It's not necessarily only the blowpipe that helps me out here. Definitely a lot of conveniences that I could get that would make Zolra twice as fast, three times as fast, but we worked with what we could. After finishing up our four days Zolra grind, I decided it was time to tie up some loose ends. And that's what I spent an entire day doing. I made back a decent portion of my money by selling my Zolra drops. I took the 200 noted dragon bones I got from Zolra and decided to use them on the wilderness altar and got over 90,000 prayer XP, leaving me really close to 70 prayer. I got my first Hispori kill for more combat achievements and ended up finishing the medium tier. And we get 71 Herbler from the lamp, let's go. With the medium combat achievements complete, I was now getting an extra two points per pest control game, allowing me to very easily finish off 94 hit points and racking up just enough points for one final level. <sighs> I can't believe I'm about to enter the Inferno. 70 prayer, that is the last level I'm getting. All my loose ends tied up, all my levels gotten. I am entirely ready. Uh, that was it. So it all comes down to this, with just under 2,000 hours of playtime on the account, unlocking RuneScape one tile at a time, it's finally time to beat RuneScape's biggest challenge. I've been waiting to say those words, and I'll see you in the finale.